Hey everyone, it's Deanna. Today, we're diving into a creepy crime story. Stick around for the chilling details. In Earlville, Iowa, Todd and Amy Mullis began their shared journey under wide skies and amidst the endless fields that define the American heartland. Todd, a farmer through and through, had his roots deep in the soil from an early age. His life's calling was clear to cultivate the land a passion ignited in 1999 with the acquisition of his first farm. This passion wasn't just a career, it was a way of life, expanding to three farms over time, a testament to his dedication and hard work. Amy, on the other hand, brought a different kind of warmth to the Mullis household. A nurse by profession, she shared an appreciation for the outdoors, a love that matched Todd's in intensity. Her spirit, adventurous and caring, found solace and excitement in nature's embrace. Hunting, fishing, and camping were not just pastimes, but a way of life for her. The paths of Todd and Amy crossed in 2003, at a time when both were seeking something more from life, a deeper connection perhaps, or a shared dream to chase. Their meeting sparked a bond that was swift and sure. By September 11, 2004, just a year after their fateful meeting, they decided to marry blending their lives and dreams into one. This union marked the beginning of a partnership that was rooted in mutual passions and a shared vision for the future. The couple soon expanded their family. Amy gave birth to three beautiful children. This was the start of a story that seemed destined for happiness, with two souls intertwined by love, family, and the land that they both cherished. Todd's commitment to farming and Amy's love for the rustic lifestyle painted a picture of harmony. Together, they embarked on a life filled with promise, managing their expanding farms and raising a family in the heartland of Iowa. In the early days of their marriage, Todd and Amy Mullis built their life together on the foundation of shared dreams and a love for the land. Their union was marked by hard work, laughter, and the joy of raising a family. Todd's farms flourished under his unwavering dedication, while Amy, embracing her new life, stepped back from her nursing career to focus on their home and children. This decision reflected their mutual commitment to creating a nurturing environment for their family, with Amy taking on a traditional role that allowed her to be present for their growing children and support Todd's farming endeavors. Life on the farm was both demanding and rewarding. The couple worked side by side, with Amy managing the household and assisting with farm duties as needed. Their partnership was a harmonious blend of Todd's agricultural expertise and Amy's nurturing care, ensuring that both their family and farms thrived. Together, they faced the challenges of rural life with resilience, always ready to tackle whatever the day brought. This period was a golden era for the Mullis family, characterized by prosperity and happiness. Their commitment to each other and their shared goals was evident in the life they built together. As they nurtured their land and family, Todd and Amy's partnership grew stronger, laying a solid foundation for their future. This time of contentment and partnership, before any troubles began, showcased the best of their marriage, a testament to what they could achieve together. The harmony in Todd and Amy Mullis's life began to show its first cracks in 2013. This year marked a turning point in their marriage when Amy, seeking something missing in her life, became involved in an affair. This event, unexpected and painful, was the first sign of deep-seated issues surfacing in their relationship. The discovery of the affair in 2013 shook the foundations of trust and partnership they had built over the years. Faced with this challenge, Todd and Amy made the decision to seek counseling. It was a step towards healing, an attempt to salvage the love and life they had created together. This period was a test of their commitment to each other and their family, navigating through feelings of betrayal and hurt. Counseling provided a space for them to voice their fears, doubts, and hopes for the future, striving to find a path forward. In the wake of the affair, Amy made a significant decision to leave her job. This choice was driven by a desire to rebuild her marriage and focus on her family, hoping to mend the rift that had formed between her and Todd. Leaving her career behind, Amy dedicated herself to their home and children, seeking to restore the stability that had been disrupted. This shift marked a new chapter in their lives, one of recovery and reconciliation. However, this period also saw the beginning of Todd's controlling behavior. As they worked through their issues, Todd's need for reassurance and control became more pronounced. 
This change in dynamics added a layer of tension to their already strained relationship. Amy's affair and the subsequent choices they made set the stage for increasing conflicts, casting a long shadow over their attempts to move past the turmoil. The efforts to rebuild were complicated by these emerging challenges, highlighting the fragility of trust and the complexities of forgiveness. By 2018, the fabric of Amy and Todd Mullis's marriage had frayed considerably. Despite efforts to mend their relationship after Amy's first affair in 2013, trust and harmony remained elusive. In the summer of 2018, Amy found herself drawn into another extramarital relationship, this time with Jerry Frasher, a man who worked on their farm overseeing the hog operation. This affair was not just a symptom of underlying unhappiness, but a catalyst for further disintegration of their marriage. Todd's discovery of this second affair marked a significant escalation in their marital crisis. Amy's fear of Todd's reaction was palpable. She had confided in friends that she was genuinely afraid for her life if Todd were ever to find out. These fears underscored the drastic shift in their relationship dynamics, from partners to adversaries, as trust was replaced by suspicion and fear. Todd's reaction to the affair was one of anger and a desire to regain control. His behavior towards Amy became increasingly controlling and possessive. This change was not just about the betrayal, but also about losing control over the life and partnership they had built. Todd's actions reflected a man desperate to hold on to a slipping reality, trying to contain the fallout of the affair by tightening his grip on every aspect of Amy's life. The tension in their household was palpable. Amy, once vibrant and full of life, now navigated her days around Todd's moods and suspicions. Her dreams of a different life, away from the constraints of her marriage, grew stronger. Yet, she was trapped by her circumstances and Todd's intensifying scrutiny. The breakdown of their marriage was not just about infidelity, but about the loss of respect, trust, and the ability to see a future together. Amy's affairs were symptoms of deeper dissatisfaction, a longing for something more than what her life with Todd offered. Meanwhile, Todd's reactions were driven by hurt, betrayal, and the fear of losing not just his wife, but the family and life he had worked so hard to build. As 2018 wore on, the Mullis household became a shadow of its former self. The joy and partnership that once defined Amy and Todd's marriage were replaced by a silence heavy with unsaid words and unshed tears. The fabric of their life together, once so strong, had unraveled, leaving them strangers under the same roof, bound by fear and unresolved anger. By the fall of 2018, Amy Mullis's sense of entrapment within her marriage reached a tipping point. The continuous cycle of fear, control, and isolation had left her yearning for freedom and a fresh start away from the turmoil that had engulfed her life with Todd. It was during this period of deep introspection and mounting desperation that Amy began to seriously contemplate leaving Todd. She envisioned a life where fear no longer shadowed her every move, a life where she could breathe freely and pursue happiness without restraint. Amy's plan to leave Todd was not made in haste. She understood the gravity of her decision, especially its impact on their children. The thought of disrupting their lives weighed heavily on her but the prospect of enduring her current existence became unbearable. Her decision was a silent plea for liberation, a desperate measure to reclaim her life and well-being. In her quest for a way out, Amy turned to those closest to her. She confided in friends and family about her intentions, seeking their support and guidance. These conversations were fraught with emotion as Amy shared her fears and hopes for the future. She spoke of the affair with Jerry Frasher, not with pride, but as a testament to her longing for a connection that had faded within her marriage. Her revelations were met with concern and empathy as her loved ones understood the direness of her situation. Communicating her plans served a dual purpose for Amy. It was both a cry for help and a strategic move to ensure her safety. She was acutely aware of the potential dangers of leaving Todd, given his previous reactions and her fear of what he might do if he discovered her plans. These fears were not unfounded, as Amy had expressed to a friend that if anything were to happen to her, Todd should be the first person to be questioned. On the morning of November 10, 2018, the Mullis farm was alive with the usual hustle and bustle. The day started like any other, with Todd, Amy, and their family attending to their daily chores. However, beneath the surface of routine activities, tension simmered, marking the day with an ominous shadow. 
Just days before, on November 6, Amy had undergone an outpatient medical procedure. Advised to rest and avoid strenuous activities, she was not in her usual health. Despite this, Amy found herself involved in the day's work on the farm, a decision that would have tragic consequences. Todd had specific plans for the day, which included preparing for the arrival of a new batch of piglets. To this end, he asked Amy to assist with minor tasks that wouldn't strain her condition. However, as the morning progressed, Todd gave Amy a peculiar task. He asked her to retrieve a pet carrier from the red shed, a simple errand that inexplicably became her final chore. The request seemed benign, a routine part of farm life, but it led Amy away from the safety of her family and into solitude. This moment, when Amy walked towards the red shed, marked the last time she was seen alive by her family. Within hours, the serene landscape of the Mullis farm was shattered by a horrifying discovery. Amy was found by her son, lifeless, with a corn rake protruding from her back. The shock of the scene sent waves of panic and disbelief through the family. Todd's reaction to finding Amy was to remove the corn rake and rush her to the hospital, a decision that would later raise questions. The immediate aftermath was a blur of emergency calls, medical interventions, and an overwhelming sense of loss. The family, once bound by their shared life on the farm, was now torn apart by a grim tragedy. The questions began to mount as the initial belief in a tragic accident gave way to suspicions of something more sinister. This day, November 10, 2018, ended not just with the loss of Amy Mullis, but marked the beginning of a search for truth amidst the shadow of doubt and fear that now hung over the Mullis farm. Upon discovering Amy's body on November 10, 2018, Todd's reaction was not what one might expect in such a tragic situation. His demeanor and actions in the immediate aftermath raised eyebrows among those who later learned of the day's events. Instead of panic or visible distress, Todd exhibited a certain calmness, a reaction that seemed out of place given the gravity of finding his wife mortally wounded. Todd's account of the discovery and his subsequent actions also presented inconsistencies that puzzled investigators. He reported removing the corn rake from Amy's back, a decision that struck many as unusual, especially for someone with a basic understanding of first aid principles, which advise against moving or altering the condition of a severely injured person. This act alone introduced a significant discrepancy in Todd's narrative, suggesting a cold and calculated response rather than one of shock or desperation. Witnesses, including their son who found Amy and called out to his father, noted Todd's composed instructions to call for help and his decision to drive Amy to the hospital himself. This level of coldness, the methodical approach to a situation naturally inducing panic, hinted at an unsettling familiarity with the crisis at hand. Further investigation into Todd's reactions revealed a man seemingly more concerned with managing the situation than with the tragic fate of his spouse. This coldness, both in his actions and in his interaction with emergency responders, painted a picture of someone detached from the horror of the moment. The discrepancies in Todd's account, coupled with his unnervingly calm demeanor, became a focal point in the investigation. These elements, stark against the backdrop of a family tragedy, suggested that the events of November 10th were not just a horrific accident, but possibly something much more sinister. In the wake of Amy Mullis's death on November 10, 2018, her family was engulfed in a deep and profound grief. The sudden and violent nature of her passing left them in a state of disbelief. Amy, a cherished member of their family, was gone in circumstances that were as tragic as they were baffling. The shockwaves of her loss reverberated through their close-knit family, leaving a void that words could hardly fill. The initial reaction was one of utter disbelief. Family members struggled to comprehend the reality that Amy was no longer with them. The details surrounding her death, found with a corn rake in her back on their family farm, seemed too horrific to be true. This disbelief soon gave way to a profound grief as the reality of her absence set in. Tears were shed and embraces were shared as they grappled with the loss of a beloved mother wife and daughter. The grief was compounded by the shock of how suddenly tragedy had struck. One moment, Amy was a vibrant part of their lives, and the next, she was gone, leaving behind questions and a profound sense of loss. The family's grief was a testament to the love and bond they shared with Amy, a bond that her untimely death could not sever. In the days following Amy's death, 
the family came together, seeking solace in shared memories and the love they had for her. They remembered Amy for her laughter, her love for the outdoors, and the joy she brought into their lives. Amid their mourning, the family also faced the daunting task of coming to terms with the circumstances of her death, a journey that would test their strength and unity in the face of unimaginable sorrow. Amy's sudden and violent departure from their lives left a mark on her family that would never fully heal. The grief and shock they experienced in the immediate aftermath of her death were just the beginning of a long and difficult process of seeking justice and finding peace. The investigation into Amy Mullis's death began immediately after the tragic events of November 10, 2018. Law enforcement officers arrived at the Mullis farm, stepping into a scene that raised more questions than answers. The initial portrayal of an accident, as described by Todd, began to unravel under the scrutiny of forensic analysis and evidence collection. Investigators approached the scene with meticulous care, gathering physical evidence that would later become crucial in piecing together the events leading to Amy's death. Among the evidence collected was the corn rake itself, an ordinary farm tool that had become an instrument of violence. This rake, which Todd claimed Amy had accidentally fallen on, bore silent testimony to the brutality of her injuries. Forensic experts played a significant role early in the investigation. The autopsy revealed that Amy had six puncture wounds on her back, a finding that contradicted Todd's account of a single fall onto the rake. This discrepancy raised immediate red flags for investigators, suggesting that the wounds were inflicted with intent rather than resulting from an accident. Furthermore, the pattern and depth of the wounds indicated that Amy had been struck more than once a detail that pointed towards a deliberate act of violence. As doubts about Todd's account mounted, the investigation deepened. The collection of evidence extended beyond the physical to the digital realm. Investigators delved into the Mullis's personal lives, uncovering a web of marital discontent and secrets. Todd's behavior in the aftermath of Amy's death, particularly his composed demeanor and the inconsistencies in his story, fueled suspicions about his involvement in her death Forensic analysis of the scene and the rake, combined with the autopsy findings, formed the backbone of the investigation. These scientific insights provided investigators with a clearer picture of the violence that had occurred, challenging the narrative of an accidental death. The evidence suggested a grim reality. Amy Mullis's death was not a tragic accident, but a calculated act of violence. As the investigation progressed, the focus shifted towards understanding the motive behind the crime and building a case that could withstand the scrutiny of a trial. The evidence collected from the farm, combined with forensic analysis and the unraveling of the Mullis's troubled marriage, laid the foundation for the prosecution's case. The early stages of the investigation set the stage for a legal battle that would seek to bring justice for Amy, delving into the heart of a family tragedy that had culminated in an unfathomable act of violence. As the investigation into Amy Mullis's death on November 10, 2018, unfolded, a clearer picture began to emerge, one that pointed toward a sinister conclusion. Central to the case against Todd Mullis were pieces of evidence that, piece by piece, dismantled the narrative of an accidental death. A pivotal element of the prosecution's case was Todd's internet search history. In the months leading up to Amy's death, Todd had conducted searches that were alarming in their specificity and intent. Queries such as, killing unfaithful women, what happened to cheating spouses in historic Aztec tribes, and organs in the body were discovered. These searches, made from Todd's personal devices, suggested a preoccupation with punishment for infidelity and violence, casting a dark shadow over his claims of innocence. Testimonies regarding Todd's behavior both before and after Amy's death painted a picture of a controlling and possessive husband. Witnesses, including friends and family, described how Todd's behavior had intensified following Amy's first affair, leading to a suffocating environment for Amy. This controlling demeanor extended to restricting Amy's movements, monitoring her communications, and isolating her from her support network. These testimonies underscored the prosecution's portrayal of Todd as a man driven to murder by jealousy and a desire to exert ultimate control. Together, these pieces of evidence formed the cornerstone of the case against Todd Mullis. The internet searches suggested a motive steeped in vengeance and anger. The forensic findings offered irrefutable proof that Amy's death was no accident, but a brutal act of violence. 
and the testimonies about Todd's controlling behavior provided insight into the toxic dynamics within the Mullis marriage, suggesting a motive rooted in possession and control. The evidence gathered painted a comprehensive picture of a man who, faced with his wife's desire for independence, chose the most final form of control. As the trial proceeded, this evidence would prove crucial in unraveling the truth behind Amy Mullis's tragic death, moving the narrative from accidental tragedy to deliberate murder. The courtroom where Todd Mullis was tried for the murder of his wife, Amy, on November 10, 2018, was charged with tension and anticipation. As the trial commenced, the atmosphere was thick with the gravity of the accusations at hand. On one side stood the prosecution, tasked with piecing together a narrative of premeditation and jealousy, while on the other, Todd's defense aimed to cast doubt on the evidence and portray the death as a tragic accident. The prosecution laid out their case with methodical precision, presenting the internet search history that pointed to Todd's contemplation of violence against unfaithful spouses. This digital footprint, they argued, was a clear indicator of Todd's motive and intent, revealing a man consumed by jealousy and driven to the ultimate act of control. Forensic evidence further bolstered their argument, with the autopsy findings contradicting the possibility of Amy's wounds being accidental. The detail of the multiple puncture wounds, inconsistent with a single fall onto the corn rake, spoke volumes of the violent reality behind Amy's death. Witness testimonies added a human element to the cold facts and figures. Friends and family of Amy spoke of Todd's increasingly controlling behavior, painting a picture of a woman trapped in a suffocating marriage. These accounts serve to humanize Amy, bringing her fears and desires to the forefront and illustrating the dangerous dynamics that led to her murder. In contrast, Todd's defense hinged on creating doubt around the prosecution's narrative. They pointed to the lack of direct evidence tying Todd to the moment of Amy's death, emphasizing the theoretical possibility of an accident. The defense questioned the reliability of forensic interpretations and suggested alternative scenarios that could explain Amy's injuries without implicating Todd. They portrayed Todd as a loving husband, attempting to shift the jury's perception of him from a jealous murderer to a bereaved spouse. The dynamics within the courtroom reflected the polarized views of the case, with both sides leveraging evidence and emotional appeals to sway the jury. The prosecution's depiction of a premeditated murder driven by jealousy and control was met with the defense's narrative of doubt and alternative possibilities. As arguments were made and testimonies heard, the jurors were left to navigate the complex interplay of evidence and emotion. The task before them was daunting, to determine whether Todd Mullis was guilty of the premeditated murder of his wife or if Amy's death was the tragic outcome of a series of unfortunate events. The weight of this decision hung heavy in the courtroom air, as the fate of Todd Mullis and the quest for justice for Amy Mullis lay in the balance. On September 23, 2019, the courtroom was filled with a palpable sense of tension as everyone awaited the verdict in the trial of Todd Mullis for the murder of his wife, Amy Mullis, on November 10, 2018. The air was thick with anticipation, each breath held as the fate of Todd was about to be revealed. The jury, having deliberated over the evidence presented, returned to the courtroom, their faces solemn, bearing the weight of their decision. As the verdict was read aloud, guilty of first-degree murder, a collective gasp swept through the room. Todd's reaction was one of stoic disbelief. He barely moved, his face a mask of composure, as if the gravity of the moment had not fully registered. This stark contrast to the expected flood of emotion highlighted the complexity of the man at the center of this tragic tale. The immediate response from Amy's family was a mixture of relief and sorrow. Tears were shed, not just for the verdict, but for the loss of Amy, whose life had been cut tragically short. For them, the verdict was a bitter confirmation of the truth they had feared, a closure to the chapter of uncertainty and pain they had endured since that fateful day in November. The jury's decision brought a sense of justice, yet it was a justice tinged with the profound sadness of knowing that it would not bring Amy back. The tension in the courtroom slowly began to dissipate, replaced by a somber reflection on the events that had led to this moment. The verdict marked the end of a trial that had captivated the attention of the community, a tragic story of love turned lethal. For Todd Mullis, the verdict was the beginning of a life sentence a punishment for the irreversible decision to end his wife's life. 
For Amy's family, it was a step towards healing, an acknowledgement of their loss and the pain that had been inflicted upon them. The moment of the verdict was a poignant reminder of the finality of justice and the enduring impact of the actions that had led to it. Following the conviction of Todd Mullis on September 23, 2019, for the murder of Amy Mullis on November 10, 2018, both their family and the Earlville community were enveloped in a profound sense of loss and reflection. Amy's death and the subsequent trial tore through the fabric of their lives, leaving a scar that would take time to heal. The family grappled with a mix of emotions, grief over Amy's death, relief at the verdict, and the heartache of knowing the children would grow up without their mother. The community, too, felt the ripple effects of the tragedy. In small towns like Earlville, such events are not just news. They touch every resident personally. Friends, neighbors, and acquaintances mourned the loss of Amy, a familiar face and a friend to many. At the same time, they struggled to reconcile the image of Todd, a local farmer and family man, with the reality of his actions. The trial had laid bare the darker undercurrents of a relationship that many believed to be like any other. In the aftermath, the community rallied around the Mullis children, offering support and compassion in their time of unimaginable loss. Efforts to find closure involved not only coming to terms with the tragedy, but also taking steps to ensure that the memory of Amy's life, her spirit, and her kindness would not be overshadowed by her death. The impact of Amy's death and Todd's conviction served as a stark reminder of the complexities hidden beneath the surface of seemingly idyllic rural life. It prompted conversations around domestic violence and the importance of reaching out and supporting those who may be suffering in silence. As the community and family moved forward, their journey toward healing and closure continued, marked by a collective commitment to support one another and honor Amy's memory. As we reflect on the story of Amy and Todd Mullis, a few pressing questions linger, inviting us to ponder deeper aspects of human relationships and societal responsibilities. What does it truly mean to trust someone, and how does the breach of this trust reshape the dynamics of a family? The story highlights the destructive power of unchecked jealousy, leading us to question, how can individuals and communities better recognize and address the signs of such destructive emotions before they escalate into tragedy? Furthermore, this case shines a spotlight on the legal system's role in addressing domestic violence and marital betrayal. How effective are our current legal frameworks in protecting victims and preventing such crimes? Are there ways the system can be improved to offer better support and safety for those living in fear within their own homes? These open questions challenge us to look beyond the surface, encouraging a dialogue on the importance of empathy, awareness, and proactive intervention in fostering safer, more trusting communities. In the wake of Amy and Todd Mullis's story, we're reminded of the complexities that underpin human relationships. It's a tale that brings to the forefront the critical importance of recognizing the warning signs of domestic control and violence. This narrative urges us not just to be observers, but to be active participants in safeguarding the well-being of those around us. Let this story serve as a reminder that it's never too late to reach out, to ask for help, or to offer support. Together, we can create a community that listens, believes, and acts to ensure safety and dignity for everyone. Remember, your voice could be the lifeline someone is desperately waiting for. Thanks for joining today's crime journey. I'm Diana, your guide in the shadows. Subscribe, hit the bell, and let's keep exploring mysteries together. Stay curious, stay alert, and see you next time. Take care.